Welcome to Jessica's Excel and Law class number three. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on my YouTube channel and click on my College website link and you can download this workbook. Hey, here we have an age discrimination case. We have uh, John Snow. He was terminated for not meeting sales quota. So we have some raw data here and we want to do some data analysis with statistical functions. So we're going to be doing formulas uh, calculating things like average, the maximum, maximum number of units, the minimum, and standard deviation, uh, which tells us how good our average is. Uh, let's go ahead and um, start off here. We want to calculate the average employee age. Now, we can kind of eye this and we can see Jon Snow is uh, 56. So we'll calculate the average age. We'll also calculate the average units sold. However, before we uh, make our calculations, let's take note. We're going to actually have to use this age column of data one, uh, two times, and then we're going to have to use the unit sold to figure out the most, the least, total, and standard deviation. We'll have to use that column, this column right here, four times. So there's a trick in Excel. You can name a range and then just use it inside of your formula. So instead of doing some function and then highlighting a range, we can name this age and then just type in age or paste the name. Um, let's go ahead and highlight this range. And naming is real simple. This is called the name box. When you hover your cursor over the name box, uh, it says name box in the screen tip or tool tip. A5 is just the active cell. When you highlight a range, it shows you the active cell. All I got to do is click on that active cell in uh, the name box and type, let's do age, enter. Now that range is no longer A5 to A17. It's called age, and it will be absolute, which means, uh, well, we're not, we don't need to worry about that because we're not copying these formulas. Uh, let's just test it. Let's click right here. Let's use the name box. Go to age. Sure enough, it highlights that. Right? We'll use that in our formula over here instead of the, this actual cell range. Let's go ahead and highlight this. And I'm going to name this something real easy. I'm going to click up in the name box. And how about US for unit sold? Then it's easy to type. I'm going to check that one. Let's go to age. US. By the way, there's a few other names in here because I always have an answer uh, sheet uh, over here. And so that's what I named that one, something slightly different. Oh, look at that. It went to the other sheet. How do I get back to that sheet? This is a great navigation trick. Uh, let's go to age. You can see it jumped over to that sheet, and sure enough, there is the name. Now, let's use that in our calculation. Now, average. What does it do? Average function. Let's go ahead and try make this a little bit smaller here. I'm pointing to the uh, column header here. Give myself a little bit more breathing room. Actually, I'm going to add some word wrap to this, and then I'm going to click on the home and click Word Wrap. That's automatic Word Wrap. Then I can reduce the size of this column. Yeah, I don't see all the words. I can see it up here. So I'm going to come over here and, and double click. Double click between 4 and 5. So unit sold. I could even do that and double click. That's just so I can maybe make it a little bit bigger here. Now watch this. We're going to use the average function. And in 2007, uh, there's a drop-down list. You know, actually, as soon as you type anything like this, you can uh, find the function you want and then double-click it. Or you can use your arrow key. Um, and then once you have it selected, you can hit Tab, a great feature. If you're using average all the time, uh, actually what you would do is you say equals AVE. You'd know that AVR gets you to it. So you, you just, uh, without thinking, type AVER Tab. Okay, and then we want the average age, so watch this. I'm going to type age. Notice there's a drop down for functions and for names. You can also do the same trick where you double click it or tab or whatever you want. I'm just going to type it in age. Notice it's blue there, and now it's highlighted over here, indicating that it got the right uh, range. Now, we should put a closed parenthesis here, but Excel is programmed if you leave it off. If I hit Enter, and then click back up here. I can see that it got put in there. Now let's do, um, look at this, average age, right? So the average age is 30, and uh, Jon Snow is 56. That's 26 years above the average age. Uh, so he's way above the average age. Uh, how about most units? 
right? If we did most units and uh, John Snow's units is not too far away, then you know maybe there's some problem. Maybe it's really not terminated for not meeting sales quota. Um, the function for most is called max. M equals M A X. And I'm going to use my trick where I arrow and then tab. Notice this is also cool. It tells you what it is. So you can literally go through each one of these and it gives you a description if you're not sure which function to use. All right, so max, max of what units sold? I'm going to type US. US. One reason why I put such a small name um, is because it's easy to type quickly. Right? I can see it's blue there and blue over there. Oops. Enter. 700. Okay, least equals, oh, what's least? Um, what if you don't know what the name of the function is? Let's try this. This is the f of x button. I click on this, and I'm going to try type something like uh, least. Let's just try least. Go. Least um, line est returns the statistics in the, that describe linear trend. No, that's not it. LCM returns the least common. Oh, well, that's not it. Wow, none of these D average. So you read through it, and you're like, if you don't find what you want, you better try something different up here. I'm going to try uh, min, minimum. D min returns the smallest number in a field column of records in a database uh, that match. Well, we don't really. We're not using the database, so let's look at the next one. Uh, we could use that function, but it's more complicated than this one. Min returns the smallest number in a set of values. Hey, that's it right there. So I will double click this. So that that just allowed us to search for a function and then read the descriptions. Now, it's got the range here. Is that the right range? It completely guessed wrong there, so that's not right. What is our range? I'm just going to type it in US. Look at that in the functions argument dialog box. It actually gives us a preview. Look at that. Um, 500, 600, et cetera. Oh, I mean 150, 600. Sure enough, it's a preview of that. And then I'm going to click OK. So we can already see uh, terminated for not meeting sales quota. Well, maybe Mr. 150 should be terminated uh, before 477. So slowly we're getting some statistical support um, to our argument that uh, perhaps there's an age discrimination uh, case here. Average units sold? Oh yeah, that would be a, a helpful number because if the average is somewhere near John Snow's, then what are you talking about terminated for not meeting sales quota? And I'm going to do equals A-V-E-R, tab. And this is units sold, US. Enter. Ah, oh, well, look at that. 457, and he's above the average. So how could you be terminated when you're above? <coughs> Maybe everyone needs to be terminated then, and not just him. All right, total units. Um, I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut for auto sum. Alt equals. And now, what if I forgot my name? Remember, we named it US in the middle of the function. There's a keyboard shortcut, F3, F3. And that gives us a paste name. And you can look through it, right? And so, oh yeah, it's US, so I'll double click that for units sold. Those are the total units. Now, standard deviation. What does standard deviation? Well, average means add them all up. So we added all these up and divided by the count. If we did it the long way for average, it would be uh, alt equals all of these. And then uh, notice when I highlight the range, it, it actually puts US in. And then count, and then US. Right? That would be the long way. We, we did it the average function, but that's technically what it's doing. But what does an average do? We now have one number that is representing all the data points. And we take averages so we have a typical value. And then we can use that in discussions, reports, uh, cases like this. The typical value is 457. Ah, but if the fact is that this one number up here, we just uh, don't have very many decimals showing. I could show this as uh, Control-1 is the keyboard shortcut for format cells, number, and I'm going to say, uh, how about number with zero decimals, and then you can see then it comes out the same. But here's the um, innate problem with an average. This is one value representing standing in for all these values. So we say, oh, this is the typical value. But 
is it really a fair representation of all of these data points? Ah, that's where standard deviation comes in. Standard deviation tells us whether the mean is a fair representation. If we get a small number, then standard deviation is a small number then our mean fairly represents the data points. In essence, what it means is it means uh, all of the raw data is clustered around this number when it's small. But if it's really big, then this is not a fair representation. So standard deviation is very helpful in determining whether our average is reliable if it fairly represents all the data points. And that would be important in uh, a case like this. All right, equals, there's two standard deviations. If this is all the employees, it's called population. If it's just some of them, a sample, then it's a sample. And there's two different uh, standard deviation functions, STDEV. Now, uh, down here is the one we want to use. I'm actually shooting this in Excel 2007. These are functions that don't exist in 2007. There it is, uh, standard uh, DEV. That is for the population. And actually, if I go back here, right here, and point to this one, it tells us standard deviation based on a sample. Okay, now, but I'm going to go down here because this, let's just assume this is the population. This is all of the people. There's just a slight difference in calculation. Uh, this says, standard deviation based on the entire population. So I'm going to select this one, double click. And uh, this is units sold, so US. 163 is our standard deviation. Uh, this label is wrong. It's actually units. Units sold. OK, so 163. Now, what this means is that 163, 68% of the values, if it's a bell-shaped curve, will lie within plus or minus uh, this number, either direction. So here's what it would mean. It would be the, the lower bound and the upper. And this is not a statistics class. This is just an introduction to Excel, a law class. So you can just skip over the standard deviation. But this is how you'd have to show it if you're going to use it at evidence. The upper, uh, sorry, the lower would be uh, that uh, average minus the standard deviation. That would give us a lower bound. And then uh, the upper bound would be this plus the standard deviation. And what this says is that 68% of the people lie between within this range. And uh, so John Snow lies well within that range. OK, so forget the standard deviation and all this. It's yummy if you know statistics and cool. Uh, but uh, what we saw here is how to you name a range, right? So if I highlight that, it shows me up there. It's uh, US for units sold. And then we show, showed how to use some functions and named ranges. All right, we'll see you next. Uh, oh, no, that's it, number three, just three videos uh, for this uh, law class. All right, see you next uh, next video.